Now, humans have a very unique feature as well. It's one of the laws of nature is that we humans feel before we think. All action requires feeling and thought. So, so you say, I know I want to do this. So I have the desire. I know how to do this and I know what to do. Now, if you may want to do something, but you don't know how to do it, it's ineffective. And we as humans have a deep rooted need to be loved. Now in here comes the understanding while you're communicating of empathy versus sympathy. You have to walk in the other person's shoes. You have to kind of understand from their point of view, their paradigm, what is it that they really are is troubling them or what is it they want or what is it they desire? What is their paradigm? That is empathy. We're talking to them and without judgment from their point of view. Where's the sympathy? We say, oh, I'm really sorry or whatever it is. And you keep telling them, trust me, trust me, listen to me. Sympathy rarely works long-term at least. It may work in the very short term. The other challenge in this paradigm is that most people by instinctively listen with the intent to reply, not with the intent to understand. Once we understand where the other person's coming from, it becomes very easy to communicate. Now, how do we communicate? Communication, 80% of it at least is nonverbal. It's your body language, it's how you do it. And why is that so? It's because we have five senses. Sound is just one of them. That's why we like face-to-face -face meetings. If we can't meet face-to-face, -face, then we actually will go ahead and try to at least do a Zoom meeting or some kind of teleconference. And we, at the same time, make ourselves presentable so that ultimately all five senses of the other human being are stimulated, they understand, they feel that you, they trust you. And then hearing is just one aspect, but then when they hear, if you have an agitated, angry sound, it's not gonna work as well as if you have a calm and very uh, settled sound that calms them down. And once the person's framework, the one that they are listening from is satisfied in that if they are satisfied, communication becomes effective. The other thing to understand in, in, in human condition is situational leadership. You know, if I am the Sergeant in a in a, uh, leading a troop, uh, commander of troops, I can't be, oh, please, could you do that? That needs command and control type of leadership and communication. Similarly, if I'm in a situation where I need somebody to be extremely creative, I have to inspire them. It's a different kind of conversation and a style that I would adopt at that time. Similarly, if I'm speaking to somebody who is facing a terminal illness, my way of communicating them has to be based on that. Uh, situation. Similarly, communicating with folks collectively as a group uh, versus communicating one-on-one. -on -one. I truly believe there is no B2B or B2C, business to business or business to consumer. What it is is human to human. You know, in my world as a physician, when somebody gets sick, they don't go to a building. They look for another human being who's going to solve their problem. And that's where communication comes into play as well. I've learned a long time ago that the secret to the many is the one. Each person lives in their own world. You are not in the world, the world is in you. And therefore, if you can communicate to, with each individual effectively, you then communicate with the group effectively. Now, what attributes do you really need at this time to communicate effectively with individuals? The first is trust. No matter how correct you are, if they do not trust you, you will find yourself that you cannot communicate effectively. Now to be trusted, you must be trustworthy, which means you've demonstrated that you will not hurt them in any way, whether it's subtle, perceived or real, and that, it's, that you will not betray them or, or hurt them in any way. Now, the next thing really comes is empathy as we've talked about. You definitely, they need to be reassured if you are in a leadership role and you have to be honest. Oftentimes people like to sugarcoat things and tell them the something that they may like to hear at that time, but then it's going to lead to a point where they find that they have been betrayed. 
frustration and exhilaration are a function of, of expectation. So at that point, it's better not to say something just to make them happy at the, say, at, at the time of the conversation, but make sure that we deliver the truth and make it that we actually have a realistic context of what we're trying to tell them. And it's extremely important to put it in the context of, of what they, they perceive. And finally, acceptance of what reality is becomes extremely crucial. Now, one has to also say, we talked about challenging times as to what really are difficult or challenging times. Anything that threatens our survival at all four of those levels we talked about, whether it's physical. So if somebody has a physical illness, whether real or perceived, they feel it's difficult, they are not at ease, that's where it's a disease. Whether it's, they don't, people feel challenged when they don't feel loved, they feel betrayed, they feel that there's a problem. Uh, so that's the second level at the emotional level, intellectually, if they feel they've been insulted. And uh, finally, of course, last is where they feel that somehow they're not going to get a chance to leave the legacy. I was in academic worlds for a long time, I still am. And I realized that at, the, at that level, it's all about leaving a legacy and people can feel really threatened if they feel the legacy is threatened. So people feel challenged or it's a difficult time in different situations. One has to understand that. Now, it's not the first time humans have found ourselves in difficult situations. Humans have been around the planet for a very long time, and there's nothing to fear more than fear itself. So courage becomes very important. I was born in the Sikh faith, and one of the things that we learn in the Sikh faith, and uh, Sikhs are known as fierce warriors, at least a certain group of them. There's a concept of what we call Jardi Kala, it really means eternal optimism. And what does eternal optimism? The belief is that ultimately there's a higher power and that things that are gonna happen to happen and you have to do your best at any given time, no matter what it is. And you accept the reality of what's happening. So in the COVID paradigm, I've worked every day of this, this pandemic, but being very safe, being fearless, but not careless being able to help others and myself and my team take care of people at the same time. Now that is a challenging time. And at that time to communicate with your team of people to give them hope, not fake hope, but real hope to be true, to be trustworthy, to do things that are really gonna change their lives that preserves their physical, emotional, intellectual and spiritual survival. And you will find that then communicating with one or multiple individuals, your team or others around you becomes very easy. Once you realize what's not at ease, I had an employee who was so paranoid because she had had a death in one of her extended family and she needed extra PPE and precautions. We provided it to her, but we were able to communicate with her. Once she was reassured, she knew it was honest we actually cared for her. There was real empathy. She then came back to understanding that she was perhaps overreacting a little bit. Another key point to learn is when somebody you're communicating with is hostile, hostility is a sign of weakness. Only the strong can be gentle. At that point, you need to be stronger. You need to be gentler. And you need to understand that their hostility is coming from some weakness some fear at the, those four levels. And we as humans are creatures of imaginations. We are the only creatures of all the creatures as humans that have imagination, which means you can project into the future. Now the human brain does not know the difference between imagination and reality, just as when you watch a horror film. You don't know that it's real. Your brain doesn't know, you may actually understand it, but your body releases the chemicals and you sense that fear, you sense whatever it's supposed to be. The same way, and I deal this with patients all the time, they come in worried about certain things. They're already imagining certain things, the anxiety, the chemicals are being released, the heart rate's up, the blood pressure's up, et cetera. People wanna feel safe. We wanna know that we will survive. At that point then is to calm them down, to accept reality as it is, be honest, they know they can trust you and we move on from there. So communicating with others is really about understanding them first. Then from their frame of reference, 
choosing the best method of communicating with them. And remember, it's human to human, not B to B, not B to C. And sometimes in communicating, slow is fast. What I mean by that is when you spend the time face to face, it's better. And a quick email may not do the work. And sometimes, yes, you need to do mass communication. You may send out a bulletin, et cetera. But for effective communication, it needs to be personal and it needs to be in their paradigm. Thank you so much. I'm uh, happy to have had this opportunity to speak to you all today. And uh, if ever I can reach out to you, you can always find me at drromichopra.com, drromichopra.com, R-O-M-I-Chopra, C-H-O-P-R-A.com. Thank you again.